No matter how fit you are, you'll struggle to perform at your best if you don't fuel and hydrate properly during your next race. I'm Andy Blow, sports scientist and founder of Precision Fuel and Hydration. And in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the three key nutritional levers you can pull to get the most out of your body on race day. Don't get me wrong, training properly to build the required fitness for your race is the number one factor that will determine how well you do on the big day. But you already know that, which is why you're out there putting in the miles. But if you're not thinking about and practicing your fueling and hydration strategy at the same time, you're not gonna be able to express all of that hard-earned fitness on race day. When you boil your strategy down to the fundamentals, there are three acute costs of taking part in endurance exercise. One is calories burned, mainly in the form of carbohydrate. Two is the fluid you lose when you sweat. And three are the electrolytes, most significantly sodium, that are lost in that sweat. Replacing a reasonable proportion of what we call the three levers forms the backbone of any decent race nutrition strategy. Your job is to learn how to pull those levers correctly by getting a handle on how much carb, fluid and sodium you need in different scenarios. So let's dive in and help you dial in those numbers. Let's start with carbs. When it comes to powering high intensity endurance exercise, carbohydrates are the main source of fuel used by your body. It's glycogen stored in your muscles and liver that provides much of the carbohydrate needed to fuel the early stages of a race. Like the money in most people's day-to-day -day bank accounts, glycogen is very much a finite resource. 90 to 120 minutes of hard activity will generally deplete your stores enough to significantly compromise performance. But even if you hit the start line with your glycogen tanks topped off, you're going to need to be taking in carbs during exercise lasting 90 minutes or more. Now I'm not saying you should be aiming for those sort of numbers straight away, but figuring out how much carbohydrate you need to perform at your best is the first thing you should consider when putting together a race nutrition plan. How much carbohydrate you need ultimately comes down to a combination of the duration and effort level. For activities lasting less than an hour, most athletes who start well fueled won't really need to worry about ingesting any carbs. But as the duration increases, so do to the potential benefits of taking on fuel. For bouts lasting between one and two hours, it can be beneficial to consume 30 to 60 grams of simple carbs per hour. This equates to about 16 to 32 ounces of a standard isotonic energy drink or one to two standard energy gels per hour. Athletes exercising for two hours and beyond can benefit from higher intakes of 60 to 90 grams of carbs an hour as long as the amount consumed doesn't cause stomach problems. It's crucial that you gradually train your gut and practice your fueling strategy during training sessions in the build-up to a race so you can comfortably tolerate your carb targets. Whilst hydration for endurance exercise isn't necessarily a complex topic, there's a tendency to oversimplify it in one of two ways. The first is by setting yourself targets that you will replace an arbitrary percentage of your estimated fluid losses by drinking X or Y amount per hour. The second is by ignoring any type of planning and relying solely on the idea of drinking to thirst. You don't have to choose between drinking rigidly to a plan or drinking entirely to thirst. In most cases, there's a middle ground and that's where we at Precision Fuel and Hydration like to sit. When trying to understand how much you should be aiming to drink, it can be useful to start by looking at how much fluid you lose when sweating. When getting a handle on your fluid losses and putting your hydration strategy in place, one of the most important factors to bear in mind is that aiming for 100% light for light replacement of sweat losses isn't something which is necessary or advisable. It can lead to over drinking and a very nasty condition called hyponatremia. For activity lasting less than 60 to 90 minutes, fluid intake of close to zero can be an option if you start very well hydrated and if environmental conditions are not especially hot and humid and you have access to plenty of liquid to top up again afterwards. When you're exercising for more than about 90 minutes as well as in hot and humid environments, fluid intake starts to be required much earlier to maintain your performance. A sensible level of fluid intake to aim for here could be anywhere between 8 ounces an hour to somewhere close to 48 ounces an hour at the very extremes. Whilst that sounds like a very wide range, and it is, 
it's fair to say that for a large majority of athletes, fluid intake in the region of about 16 to 32 ounces per hour is a decent zone in which to start experimenting. Start at the lower end of that band if your sweat rate is low or conditions are milder and be more aggressive if you have a high sweat rate or the conditions are very hot and humid. Sodium is the main electrolyte you lose in your sweat. We also lose potassium, magnesium and calcium, but in far smaller quantities. As well as helping to maintain fluid balance in the body, sodium plays an important role in the absorption of nutrients in the gut, maintaining cognitive function, nerve impulse transmission and muscle contraction. For me, it was my own issues with cramping and ending up in the medical tent during races that pushed me to find a solution to my hydration issues. I took a sweat test and discovered that I lose about 1,800 milligrams of sodium per litre of sweat, which makes me a very salty sweater. We know from conducting thousands of sweat tests now that the average athlete loses around 950 milligrams of sodium per litre of sweat, but we see huge amounts of variance between athletes. Getting a handle on how much sodium you need to be taken in with your fluids is a critical part of executing a successful hydration strategy come race day. Whilst everybody is different, a low concentration of sodium to take in with fluids during an ultra distance run would typically be around 500 milligrams per litre. At the other end of the spectrum, concentrations of around 1500 milligrams per litre tend to be as high as most athletes need to go if they're heavier sweaters or doing longer races in very hot conditions. If you're unsure where to start, something in the region of 1000 milligrams per litre is a sensible place to begin when dialing in your sodium numbers. Know your numbers and practice your strategy and training. So there you have it, the three levers of an effective race nutrition strategy. If you need any help with understanding how to pull the carbohydrate, fluid and sodium levers during your next race, use the free fuel and hydration planner via the link in the description. Time spent developing and practicing your nutrition strategy and training to dial in those numbers and nail the logistical challenges of how you'll hit them is definitely an investment that will come back to you with interest on race day.